let's take a look at how to graph the absolute value of a quadratic function. Similar to a linear function, we're going to graph the line or the parabola first, and then we're going to reflect it. So what this means is that I'm going to first graph um, f of x equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. But remember that in order to graph a parabola, we first need to change it to vertex form. So we need to changing it to vertex form. And then we're going to take whatever is below the x-axis and we're going to reflect it above the x-axis. So we're going to reflect in the x-axis the part of the graph that lies below the x-axis. So let's take a look at an example. Now, I find it helpful to also have the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So let's find those as well. Let's do the y-intercept first because it's actually easier. We're going to plug in 0 in for our x's. So we have 0 minus 0 plus 3. So y equals 3. That's our y-intercept. And then for x-intercepts, we're going to substitute 0 in for y. And then we're going to find our x's. So for now, we're just going to ignore the absolute value. And I can see I can't factor this. So I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1 so I can have a positive x squared, which is nicer for me to work with. Okay, so plugging it into the quadratic formula, I have x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3. And then all over 2 times 1, so it's just 2. And so we simplify, we get negative 4 plus or minus root 28 over 2. And this can simplify to negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 7 over 2, which then becomes negative 2 plus or minus root 7, since all three of these numbers can be reduced by 2. Now, it's probably nicer to get some decimal numbers so that we can graph. So converting these, we get negative 4.5. Six five and 0 0.65. So you can try that on your calculator. So we have these three intercepts, uh, which will help us and guide us later when we're graphing. All right, now our next is to take the negative x squared minus 4x plus 3, and we need to change it to vertex form. So let's rewrite it down here. Now, when we're graphing, we don't take away any of the negatives. It is a function that is an absolute value, but it doesn't mean that we um, get rid of anything that's negative. So what we're going to do is we're going to complete the square. And to do that, let's just ignore the absolute values for now, and we'll put them in after. So we're going to factor out a negative 1 from the first two terms. But remember, the last term, we're going to leave it the same and it's going to be the outside of my brackets. So completing the square, we take half of 4, the middle term, and then we square it. So we're going to go plus 4 and minus 4. Now we can put the absolute values back. All right, so going to the second step, we're going to kick out this last constant here by multiplying the negative 1 times the negative 4 so that we only have these three terms here remaining, since that's what our perfect square is. So we have negative 1, and then x squared plus 4x plus 4. Take the negative 1 and times by negative 4. So we get plus 4, and then plus 3. And we'll put the absolute values back in after. All right, finally we're ready to factor. So now that we have a perfect square here, we have negative 1, and then x plus 2, all squared, and then plus 7. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to graph the absolute value of this parabola. Now before I do that, I'm actually going to just graph the parabola without the absolute value first. So this is something that you should know how to do. We've done lots of these in the past. We're going to take our vertex. Remember, it was the opposite sign of plus 2, so it's going to be negative 2, positive 7. And we're going to pick two points on either side. And then we're going to plug them into our equation. So I'm just going to do this quickly. 
So we have 3 and 6, and then 6 and 3. So let's plot these five points on our graph. Okay, now we can see that it doesn't reach the x-axis, which I kind of want um, that the parabola to reach. So I'm going to pick a couple more points. I'll pick 1 and 2 for my x values, and then plugging them in, I get negative 2 and then negative 9. So we're going to have 1 and negative 2 and 2 and negative 9. Now remember, parabola is symmetrical, so on the other side, I will also have negative 5 and negative 2 and negative 6 and negative 9. All right, so now I'm going to connect my points, but I'm going to actually connect them according to it being an absolute. Now remember, absolute values mean that if the value is positive, it's going to stay positive. So all the numbers, and sorry, all the points up at the top will all remain the same. So I'm going to connect all of these, and you can see that I have my y-intercept of 3 right here. And then I have my two x-intercepts, negative 4.65 and 0.65-ish. All right, now the points below the x-axis, let's draw um, a dotted line to represent this part of the parabola. So remember the absolute value means that all the negative values will become positive. So in this case, this is a y value. So all of these y values that are below the x-axis now become positive. So we're going to reflect them. So this is negative 5, negative 2. Now it's going to become negative 5, positive 2. And then we have negative 6, negative 9. It will now become negative 6, positive 9. And then same on the other side. Oops, this doesn't want to graph. All right, now remember this part below was a continuation of the parabola. So we should still have a line here that looks parabola-ish. So it shouldn't be totally straight, but curved a little bit as if it were a parabola that was increasing. And there we have it. So I'm just going to fix this right side a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So we can see that it has x-intercepts here and, oops, sorry, and here. And this red graph is now the absolute value of this um, quadratic function. Now using the graph, we're going to find our domain and range. So we can see that the domain for the axis can go off and off on both to the left and to the right. So we're going to say the domain is all real numbers. Now the range, it starts, the lowest value is 0. So both here and here, the points sit on the x-axis. So y is going to be greater or equal to 0 since the graph points out. All right, finally, for practice, we're going to express the function as a piecewise function. So we can say that f of x equals, and we're going to draw a curly bracket, so our original parabola, let's start with that. Our original parabola was negative x squared minus 4x plus 3. And we can see that occurs in this middle part. That was the middle part. That was the first part of the parabola that I drew. So that occurs from this x value, negative 0. Point, sorry, negative 4.65 to positive 0. 0.65. So using exact values, I'm going to go from negative 2 minus root 7 less than or equal to x, and it goes all the way to negative 2 plus root 7. Now we're going to take the second piece. The second piece is this part, the outside of the parabola, which is now reflected. So that actually, if you think about it, this actually represents a positive parabola. So imagine, I'm just going to highlight this in yellow, imagine that this was a parabola that looked like this. Okay, so we can see that would be, that would have to be a positive parabola, which means that this whole function is then going to switch signs. So it's going to be 
positive x squared plus 4x and then minus 3. And this part, where I highlight in yellow, and which is also red, the outer edges of the parabola are now going to represent, is represented by the second piece. So that's going to be x is less than negative 2 minus root 7. And then we also have x is greater than negative 2 plus root 7, which rep is represented by the x-intercepts. And that's partly why we wanted to find the x-intercepts too. All right, let's take a look at one more example, but we'll do this all together. Okay, so let's graph um, this uh, absolute value of this quadratic. We're going to say the intercepts, domain, and range, and write this as a piecewise. So I'm going to start with my y-intercept. So we have 0 minus 0 plus 5. So y-intercept of 5. Our x-intercept, we're going to set this equal to 0. And then we have x squared minus 6x plus 5. So we're in luck this time because this is factorable. So we get x minus 5 and x minus 1. So x equals 5 and 1. So we have our three intercepts. Okay, now to graph, remember we need to rewrite this in vertex form. So we have y equals x squared minus 6x. And to complete, we're going to half negative 6 and then square it. So we get plus 9 and minus 9. We'll put our 5 constant at the end. And now we're going to factor these first three terms. And we get x minus 3, all squared. And then negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4. All right, so doing a quick table. I'm going to fill this in uh, with 3, negative 4. Pick two other values. And we'll get 0, negative 3, negative 3, and 0. And again, I'm going to pick one more value so that I can extend my graph. So when I pick 6, I get 5. So let's plot these um, 6 points on the graph. I'm going to. Okay, I've plotted my um, 6 points. And now, actually, I put a seventh point in by reflecting. And so anything that is above the x-axis, we're going to keep it. So I'm going to draw a line that extends this part. And then these three points down here, we're going to reflect them over the x-axis because they're negative, And we want to take the absolute value. So this will be at 4 now. And then this one will now be at 3. And this point will be at 3. So remember, this bump that would be down here like this, this whole bump gets reflected to create a bump that looks like this. And then this red graph is now your absolute value. So I'm going to actually go back here and put in the absolute values for my function. So again, we can see that the domain is all real numbers, since it goes on and on to the left and right. And our range, the whole graph is above the x-axis, so y is greater or equal to 0. And then now let's write our piecewise. So let's go with original piece. So the x squared minus 6x plus 5. Now remember, the first piece I graphed was the ones that stayed the same, and those were the ends of the graph. So this time we're going to say that x is less than or equal to. So the ends would be this part here. I'm going to highlight them. Okay. So x is less than or equal to 1, and x is greater or equal to 5. The reflected part would be an upside-down parabola now. So we're going to take this regular original function, and we're going to switch all the signs. So it would be negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. And that only occurs in the middle part of my parabola. So the x values in the middle part are from 1, less than x, and then less than 5. So always try to go with what the original graph was, write that piece down, and then state what the second piece is based on your reflected part, and then use that part of the domain.